Hi, Bill here. Uh, on a recent camping trip, I noticed that my Atwood 6 gallon electric gas water heater was kind of singing a bit on electric mode. And uh, I know that that means the heating element is starting to get corroded. And, uh, and so I was going to go ahead and replace the electric heating element. It was working fine, but I figured I'd preemptively replace it. So I came out here quickly to look and figure out what style and size I needed. And I realized that on these Atwoods, there's the gas port for the electric for the gas portion of the heating. And there's the drain plug. No electric heating element on the outside of the camper. So I went and looked up, and sure enough, it's on the inside, and I'll go in there and show you. But one thing I want to point out here is that the height of the drain plug is not at the bottom of the tank. You can see it's actually quite a bit higher than the bottom of where the tank is, where the gas goes in to heat. So let me go inside and show you the problem I ran into. Okay, so here's inside my travel trailer. And my hot water heater backside is actually a lot more accessible than, than some. Um, but still yet, I've got some issues to deal with. Um, one is, first of all, I've got this bypass uh, valve system here that goes around the water heater to shut off um, the flow to the water heater that had to get disconnected to have access to the little electrical box at the bottom of the water heater where the heating element actually resides there is the actual heating element you can see the wires attached Phillips uh, head screws to the back side and the I believe inch and a half um, hex head on there the problem as I was looking at this is when I disconnected this bottom um, valve for the bypass about a half a gallon of water came out that I had to suck up with the shop vac before it uh, got all over the floor. And that uh, drain is considerably higher on the tank than where the heating element goes in. Now I suspect this was one of the smartest, dumbest ideas I've seen. And it probably helps more people than it hurts because I think the number one reason heating elements go out in RVs is because people flip on the electric element before they filled their their uh, hot water heater with water. Whereas in this case, um, unless it's a brand new unit that's never seen water or it's set for a decade, there's gonna be quite a bit of water in the bottom of this water heater that never comes out. And because of the shape of the tank, it probably never hurts it when it freezes because it's got plenty of room to expand and everything. But that means if I pull that electric water heater element out, I'm gonna have to deal with um, probably a half a gallon to a gallon of water pouring into that box uh, all over my RV floor in a tight spot that I can't get to. So that is why they actually recommend, believe it or not, to replace the heating element. Uh, Atwood recommends that you pull the whole heating, the whole hot water heater out of the side of the RV, 16 screws, break the silicone seal, take it all the way out under the LP, change the element, then reinstall the whole unit. Um, because mine was just singing, I'm going to go ahead and button everything back up, and if it does fail, I'll switch to gas, and I will make the painful repair when I have to. And what I'll probably end up doing is trying to take some of this wiring out, get that all as clean as I can, and have the big shop vac ready, and I'll probably keep the unit installed and just suck the water as it comes out. Or maybe I'll try to stick a tube into the drain hole with a kind of a crook to it and try to suck more of the water out of the bottom of the tank. But I, I didn't see any good videos explaining why um, it's not apparent how to change the heating element in an Atwood heater. And that's because it's kind of a pain. So um, if you go to do it and you go to take that out inside your RV because you've got access, be ready to handle all that water. Thanks.